Right, so welcome back to another episode of Calvin's Car Dealership. This is essentially a virtual online car dealership that's designed solely for YouTube. This is just for YouTube. And uh, basically, we're, we're advertising the figures, the purchases, the sales, the expenses, the problems, the dramas, the headache, all the stuff that comes with day-to-day -day car trading, all right? So uh, behind me here, I've got a few bits of stock because currently, I'm, this is a new dealership, yeah? So I'm currently trying to buy as much stock as possible to get, to get the ball rolling. And I've got this Mercedes here. I've also got another car inside the unit as well, all right? So, so in this video, we're going to be trying to work out if we can earn money out of non-runners, basically, all right? Let's just get on with it. So it is a, it's a little bit annoying. The old April showers are attacking us today. It's been chucking it down, but currently it's okay. It's bearable. I can see the lens getting a little few little raindrops on there they should be all right uh, so and also muddy puddles we're actually we've ordered a load of tarmac chipping so we're going to be getting uh, the yards the puddles i'll keep treading in muddy puddles but yeah we'll get that sorted all, again going back to being new you know this is all the process we put our signs up last week i'm actually not too happy with them i want bigger signs i want it looking a bit better but it's all right for now so obviously the priority right now is buying stock yeah uh in a recent video we bought the golf gti there which is a performance pack car they come with an lsd from factory uh, that's actually a cat in car in that little series we're trying to work out if we can earn money out of a categorized car um i'm yet to get that car looked into it does need a bit of tlc but we shall see next to that we've got the m135i that's actually a planet of dreams car i'm thinking that by the time this video goes live that would have been given away but if you if it's not been given away yet you can enter for free obviously it's free to enter go to the website planetdreams.co.uk or if that has been given away We've got the Audi S3, that's going to be the next car in line, all right? Audi S3 Saloon, wicked, wicked car. That is not a dealership car. That is a car, again, purely for Planet Dreams. Go and enter for that, all right? So the Mercedes, right? This car was offered on our platform, enterreg.com. It's a trade-only platform. I say trade-only. Private sellers go on enterreg.com to sell their car. And the car traders on the back end of the website get offered these cars, yeah? This car come through on the platform as a non-runner. And the customer was like, look, I've had a, a breakdown in it, yeah? On the side of the road. They are, let me take you over, over it first, yeah? On the side of the road, it's a bit beaten up. It needs a bit of love, a bit of TLC. It needs a lot of love, actually, a lot of TLC. Uh, we'll talk more about that now. So uh, it broke down on the side of the road, yeah? And he rang the RAC. They've turned up, said, look, the engine's just given up. We believe it's a fail, failed timing chain. So they've recovered it from the side of the road to a local garage. The local garage have confirmed, yeah, it needs a timing chain. It's, it's ruined the engine and the best thing to do is just replace the whole engine okay so it's currently it does turn which is kind of a sign you know, i can show you what it sounds like in a bit and as you know and like an engine for one of these it ain't going to be cheap right so it needs a new engine and then when you look at the bodywork of the car it ain't very tidy at all the whole of this side needs repairing this mirror has got a little crack in it all of the wheels need refurbing. Uh, this is just cosmetic stuff as well. What else did I notice? The rear bumper's got a couple of marks on both sides, one on this side, one on the other side. Uh, the front bumper, I think, has got a small mark on it as well. Interior, let's have a look. It's obviously got the little tow hook on here. Have I told you what I paid for this yet? I think I did in the intro, didn't I? If I haven't, I've done it in the thumbnail. A thousand pounds, a thousand pounds. The customer was like, look, I just need to get this car out of the way. Just give me a grand for it. I was like, my god had to pay a bit of money to get it recovered but thousand pound man look at this car for a grand interior it ain't worn too bad especially for a merc we all know like mercedes interior it ain't too clever it don't wear very well um it's got that sort of thin pvc-ish leather uh, it's done 134,000 miles so looking at that interior you wouldn't think it's done a, i know it does need a clean up and he's a it needs a bloody good clean up you can see this car hasn't been loved have we got any history with it let's have a little look inside What else we've got? No way, we've got some Simon Cowell sunglasses. Put them on. On it, on it, keeping that rain out of my eyes. And what else we've got going on? Do you know what, I look like an absolute sausage. I'm taking them off. Heated seats, it's got heated seats, automatic gearbox, it's a coupe as well. Um, thousand pound, I keep looking at it thinking a thousand pound, but is it false economy buying a car for a grand? Better off just going and buying a retail one. We're going to talk about retail values on this car shortly as well, right? Let's see what history has got. Has it got any history? Mercedes, obviously Mercedes service history is online. Is this an online print out here? Uh, next service, 59,000 miles. It's probably not that. There's a couple of bits in here. Not anything too clever, but... Oh, am I wrong? Electronic service sheet. Here we go. This was when it had done 38,000 miles. So it's obviously done a lot of miles since then. 
almost a hundred thousand more than that since then. Service three, service four, service 20. Do you know what? I don't care. I just look at this car and I think a grand, a grand for a, a 15 plate coupe automatic Mercedes C, is it C220D? Yeah, it's got the handbook. It's got, I think it's got two keys as well. Um, there's another little service thing in there as well, look. Check that out. I'm probably wondering, Cav, what are you can do with this car? <laughs> what are you can do with it? I'm gonna talk about that shortly, by the way. Uh, but before we do that, I do want to introduce you to the second banger of the week. That's basically what these two cars are. Uh, another service receipt there. When was that done? 23,000 miles. How many owners this car had? At this stage of the video, I think we need to do a car vertical check, don't we? Let's do that right now. Here we go, the Mercedes-Benz C-Class. The mileage is all good. It's not been stolen. It's had no accidents, which is brilliant. So it's a HPI clear car and it's got no finance on it. And you can see a whole timeline of where it's been along over the years. Um, the current keeper, let's just have a look when it had, last had a keeper change, was registered in 2015 in June. Uh, ownership changed in September 2016. And it looks like it hasn't had another keeper since then. The most up-to-date or most recent um, inspection as such on this car was in March 2022, which is last year. That's when it was MOT'd. And it looks like it's got a couple of visories on there. Offside rear brake this worn and near side rear brake this worn. So the back, back two brakes will probably need C2 as well. The MOT expiry is actually in June. So I, I suppose if you were to put an engine in this car, put the bodywork, get the bodywork done, it's going to be, it's then going to need a new MOT. Uh, the mileage is all good. You can see the graph there. It's all consistent, which is pretty good. So the base of this car, one former keeper, it's got a bit of service history from Mercedes. Um, you know, it's quite a good spec as well. The base of it's really good. I know it's done a bit of mileage, but then the reality is, I suppose, the end goal with spending, if you were to spend all this money, getting the engine done, the bodywork done, the wheels done, and, you know, getting it through an MOT, the end goal is, it has got quite a lot of miles. So from a retail point of view, it's, it's really hard to know. So let's look at values. I think that's what really matters. So if we go over to back to Enter Reg, again, car trading platform is what we use uh, all the times where we trade from, we buy cars from here, we sell cars from here, uh, we value cars in here, we get all of our invoices in here. It's a, it's a really good all-in-one platform. And if we look at uh, the valuations here, KT15 EGF, 134,000 miles, we use Auto Trader and Cap. They are the market leaders for valuation. The pair of them, they're both good. They're both perfect in, in, uh, indications of values on cars. Um, Cap saying, in below average condition, this car should be £3,800 in the trade. Uh, the retail value of this car is 6950 6950 quid. And then if you look at the auto trade valuation, the trade value of it, according to auto trade, is £1,000 more uh, than the cap value, £4,800 and the retail value according to, re uh, to, to Auto Trader is 7,460 quid. Should we have a quick look on Auto Trader itself and just have just confirm that? Oh, seven, seven and a half grand. Imagine buying a car for a thousand pounds. Granted, <laughs> it needs a bit of TLC, it needs a lot of TLC. It's pretty much a write-off, the amount of work that it needs. This is a really broad check, really, really broad check. I've just gone for Mercedes C-Class Coupe Diesel Auto, yeah? Uh, the cheapest one there is categorized it's 5990 uh, 2014 plate car with 80,000 miles uh, there's a private seller there at six and a half grand 6750 so another private seller that's pretty much an identical car there 112,000 miles in Leeds private seller says it's got service history um, it's white as well it's got the same wheels 7,000 pounds so I reckon auto trader retail value is about right Seven, I think it would stand out at seven and a half grand. But then saying that, 134,000 miles, I think that's priced right. It's a seven and a half grand car. So I think we'll leave this section of the video at that. I want to introduce you to the other car because <laughs> that's a bit of a gem as well. Um, let's cut to the next car of the week or the next bang of the week, which I also paid a thousand pounds for, um, a Nissan Navara. Do you know what? I didn't even show you what it sounds like on startup. Well, I say it don't start. So you get a little bit of a turn. No, you don't. No, you don't, Cal, because the battery is also dead. Let me get jump pack quickly. Oh, the bonnet's already open. Of course it is. We'll stay there. I don't want to show you the next car yet. Stay there. Stay there. Two hours later. Yeah, she's <laughs> she's a beauty, that one. <laughs> Looking forward to showing you that. Right, let's um, get the Merc. I was going to say fire it up. <laughs> Can't even fire it up. 
basically got no engine cow. Look at that. Look at that. They work really well, don't they? This is Binker's drum pack, by the way, yeah? Obviously, for those that are new to my channel, I am actually like a genuine car dealer. Behind me here is my actual car dealership. This is the YouTube car dealership. That's the real car dealership. The idea of this one is to entertain you lot, all right? That one is the one that I'm, I'm trying to earn money out of. This one, well, I'll just be honest, I'm trying to earn money out of this one as well, but the way things are going, <laughs> well, you know, it's all good entertaining for you, entertainment for YouTube anyway. So, yeah, hence the, the Binker sign on the drum pack. Right. This is it, the moment of truth for the C220D or C200D, whatever it is. Yeah, that, that was the wrong key, Calv. Yeah, that's the other Mercedes. Not, not the, um, yeah, get it, yeah. You know I was saying about them muddle, muddy puddles earlier? Yeah. Yeah, that's the M135i key just gone in the muddy puddle. What have I done with the key now? I just had it in my hand. I literally just had it in my hand. This is the thing with being a car dealer. Trust me, keys give you a headache. There's actually a key man walking around the side. <laughs> Two keys, KT15. Here we go. The moment of truth. Stick the key in the ignition. Turn it on. We have power. Bonnet is apparently open. Yes, I know that. Three, two, one. But that was quite interesting, wasn't it? It almost started then. I'm not gonna do that again because one, if I was a mechanic watching me through the lens of the video right now, I'd be like, mate, what are you doing? Just leave it. It's got a snapped, a broken or slipped tooth on the timing chain. You're gonna ruin the engine even more. Just leave it. Or two, um, I've got to protect my investment, and I? I don't want to wreck it even more. So it's quite good that it's trying to start. It's not completely locked up. It's not completely failed. Uh, but there is definitely an issue there, all right? Let's now cut to the next section of the video, which is the next gem of the week, the Nissan Navara. Here it is then, my, what year is it? What year is this car? It is a 2006 Nissan Navara. Now the thing that drew me to this car when I first saw it was the stickers. Look at this, SWAT written down the side. This is actually uh, stickers from the company that it came from. So again, this car came through Enter Edge, uh, through another trader that we deal with. And the company stickers on the bottom there, Specialist Worktop Application Team, all right? What a great name, SWAT. What a great name. They've gone for like a, a camo sort of style. This is not a promotion for the company. I've never dealt with them before. I'm sure they do a wonderful job of um, Mr. Mitre. Uh, what do they do? Work tops. Work tops. That's what they do, isn't it? They do work tops. Specialist work top application team, yeah? Um, SWAT. So, yeah, I'm sure. I don't know if they supply them, they fit them. I'm guessing they do. But anyway. Um, I saw it and I thought, this is a bit of me. This is going to be a great car to buy uh, for Calvin's car dealership. It's going to make a great video. When, how else can you buy an old, rotten Nissan Navara non-runner? That's what this car is. I'll say that. It falls in the non-runner category, but we're going to talk about what's actually wrong with it shortly. Um, and make, how can you do that and make it interesting for YouTube? Well, you buy it as a car dealer, didn't you, Calvin? You buy it as a car dealer and you attempt to make money out of it. That's the aim of the game. Now, this car, I paid £1,000 for it plus VAT, all right? VAT is a bit of a pain, especially at this end of the market, because most people buying a car for this kind of value don't want to pay VAT. It's a bit of a hurdle when you're selling a car, but it's compulsory. I've paid VAT on this car, so when I go to sell it, I need to charge the person VAT when I come to selling it. Little bit annoying, uh, but let's hope that the person that buys it is also a VAT registered company, meaning that they can just pay the VAT and it doesn't affect anyone negatively. By the way, you can claim the VAT back for those that are completely clueless about VAT. Me as a trader, I pay a £1,000 plus VAT for it, 200 quid in VAT. I then claim that VAT back uh, every quarter on my VAT return, all right? So, yeah, £1,000 plus VAT, bargain. £1,000 for the Merc, bargain. I reckon that's a bit more of a bargain than what this one is, uh, but this one does actually start. Let me get it in, inside. It's got a pretty good spec as well. It's got a sunroof. It's got a sunroof, an automatic gearbox. The rain is really coming down now as well. We've timed this perfectly. We've done the outside bit on the Merc first, done the Navara after, and uh, hold on, it's got heated seats. Need a bit of legroom. Yeah, we timed it, timed it really well. 
Multifunctional steering wheel. Has it got heated seats? I think the heated seat switch, is it down there? Where's the heated seat switch on these cars? Full leather, it's got full leather. Oh, it's actually got heated seats. Cameras, they're actually my cameras. Should we get that open just for the benefit of light? Start the engine, yeah? 140,000 miles this has done. 140,000 miles, got a bit of diesel in it. Starts on the button, yeah? On the bloody button, currently in park, ticking over nicely. No lights on the dash bar, the, um, the fuel light and the seatbelt light. Has it got sat nav? It's got sat nav as well. Sat nav, heated seats for the second or third time, sunroof for the second or third time, full lever for the second time, and an automatic gearbox for the second time. Bit of a squeak there from a belt under the bonnet. Should we have a little look under the bonnet? So you're probably wondering now, Cal, what's wrong with this car? Should we do a car vertical check on it? Let's do that bit now. By the way, for those that are new to my channel, Car Verticals is a platform that I use when buying a car just to check the background history of a car. Use my code CCD. I'll put a link to them in the description below. Use my code CCD to get a little discount on your car check. It's very important that you do your background checks when you're buying a car. I recommend Car Vertical. There's lots of people out there you can use. Um, in the trade, we also use HPI. They're brilliant, but that is a trade-only platform that I use when checking cars for the public. Car Vertical do a wonderful job, all right? So let's go to Car Vertical right now. Will VRS is actually calling me. I wonder if he wants a, a Mercedes repair. Probably not, probably not. So um, here we go. Nissan Navara D40. Navara's got the VIN number there. Or something else I always recommend you check, by the way, is the VIN number on the logbook, the check, and the car itself all match up, yeah? Vital thing that is, make sure you do that when you're buying uh, a used car, all right? So mileage tick, yeah? Theft tick, so so far so good. Accidents tick, finance tick, yeah? So this car is completely HPI clear, okay? You're probably wondering now, okay, what is wrong with it? It looks all right, it starts on the button, engine sounds sweet, it's HPI clear, yeah? Well, I'm about to tell you exactly what's wrong with this car. If we go back to, so it's manufactured in 2006, uh, the 19th of June apparently, few advisories there on an MOT. If we continue past all of this nonsense and go to the current MOT, yeah, which is uh, point number 1920, 21, 22. So, wow. That's the one. Point 24, failed an inspection in the United Kingdom in March 2023. This car has just gone through an MOT and failed <clears> miserably. <throat> the things that it's failed on are, you ready for this? Offside rear vehicle structure or chassis has ex excessive corrosion, um, seriously affecting its strength within 30 centimetres of body mounting. Yeah, that is disastrous. If you look at pictures on Google of what happens to these cars when the structure of them gives up, here's examples now. Yeah, you do not want to be driving a Navara when uh, the chassis snaps. So this car has got some pretty serious chass chassis issues. Um, Steering system excessively rough. Uh, near side front brake disc worn. Uh, pitted, who cares about braces? Uh, brake disc when you've got a, a chassis that needs replacing. Near side rear brake pipe corroded. Near side tyre, hazard warning switch. Rear exhaust, I'm going up and down, up and down. Exhaust emissions, um, likely to be infested, likely affected by the exhaust leak. It needs so much doing to it. So, you're probably now wondering, do you know what? I want to take it for a drive, actually. Let's take it for a drive. But before we go for a drive, let's have a quick look at the prices of Nissan Navaras online. On AutoTrader, the cheapest automatic Nissan Navara is this one here at 2595 that's categorized, but the cheapest HPI clear one is 3850. Then if we head over to eBay, the cheapest one on eBay is 4295. So at a thousand pound plus VAT, my one seems like a bargain. Yeah, I'm a little bit conscious that this rain might be affecting the audio on this video. I don't know if it is. I hope it's not. These mics are actually really good. Um, but I think I'd like to just, we can go for a run around the Binker Yard. That's legal, you know, it's private property. I want to see what it drives like. It's a good opportunity to go up to the customer parking, back down here, and um, I'll tell you what my plans are for these two cars. That is it. It's a wicked car though, isn't it? That's what I feel. I look at these and I think, I look, I quite, I'm not, not that they're the most attractive things in the world, but I don't mind the look of them. They look quite sort of robust. The chassis isn't robust. For those that know about these cars, we would have already known that the chassis on these things are awful. And um, it ain't a cheap job to get prepared either. 
but for a thousand pounds, it's a bargain, isn't it? It's a bargain, mate. So, let's see what it drives like. The rain, the rain looks like it's coming down. Bit of a squeak there and there. Definitely a bit of a squeak there. Get that hat off. Hashtag on it, Woolly Hats, by the way. Available at calvinscardiro.com. But you shouldn't be needing them. You should be needing t-shirts as the weather brightens up, as we edge towards the summer. Uh, but we do, do also, we also do t-shirts as well with hashtag on it logos on it. Um, I'll link that in the description below. Anyway, so the transit there, obviously I've still got that. That is not a bit of stock. I do not really want to part with that. We'll call that the work van, yeah? Call that the work van. I don't actually use it. Seatbelt on, should we get the seatbelt on? Oh, that would make sense why the hazard switch is at fault because it's actually, yeah, hanging out of the dash there. Looks like it's working though. Mate, this is driving all right. Bit of a squeak from the front. Over my nice clean yard. By the way, if you didn't see the yard cleaning video, please go and check that out. It was an absolute mission. I want as many people to see that video as possible. That was at my car dealership, Binker, uh, the one that I was talking about earlier. You can see that this yard is far bigger than the yard that we have for Cowan's car dealership. But anyway, back to the Navarra. It's all doing as it should. No lights on the dash. Bar that horrible squeak. It's all right, isn't it? It's pulling all right from what I can make out. <laughs> A little bit of drift in there. Back round here. Can't really do much more, can I? Drive up here. It's great having a big yard like Look at this, this is brilliant, isn't it? Yeah, I like it. I really, really like this car, but that's as much driving as I'm allowed to do on it because it can't go on the road, can it? So the question right now is, as I'm backing up, has it got parking sensors? In the Navara. Well, Calvin, what are you doing with these cars? What are you doing with them? Come on, spill the beans, Calv. Basically, look, as a new car dealer, oh. as a new car dealership, I obviously want to maximise as best as I can on the profits of these cars that we're buying for the YouTube car dealership, right? The Merc that's parked there is, um, it's a wonderful car. I'm kind of torn with what to do with that car. Before I tell you about it, let's talk about the Navarro. That's the juicy bit. That's the juicy bit of the video. This car here, to me, it seems like an absolute no-brainer. There is no point in me spending money on getting this car done. I'm just gonna put it on enter reg, offer it to the trade, and try and get someone, uh, try and find a buyer for it uh, as it is, yeah? I'm sure maybe as a breaker or someone might want it as a project themselves. It's got auto headlights, it's actually got auto headlights. That's amazing. Um, someone might want it as a, as a breaker or, or a project car for themselves, I don't know, but for me, um, Currently, it's got no use to me. I want to quickly cash back in on my money, get my money back with a little profit on it, preferably, uh, and uh, get onto the next bit of stock. That's always priority, keep moving onto the next bit of stock. The Mercedes, however, I'm really unsure. I'm a little bit torn with what to do with that because basically, if that car has a retail value of seven and a half thousand pounds, it does need a hell of a lot of work doing to it before getting it to that value but I am so tempted to get all the work done and get it advertised for retail money with a warranty, uh, offer finance on it, all that sort of stuff, uh, because it will it, it, it will make a really nice car. That car has been owned by one person for since 2016. Like It must have been a good car. It's just unfortunate that the timing chain has given up. And not just that, the engine does turn. So it could be a repairable engine, but worst case, it needs a whole new engine. So. Um, I am half tempted to offer it in the trade as well, just put it on enter reg and um, see if I get any decent offers for it as it is. I think I am gonna do that because going back to what I just said just now, sometimes it's just about getting the money back in the bank, keeping moving, getting onto your next deal and uh, you know keeping the cash flow rolling. We ain't got pot loads of money to just splash about and sit on cars. So I think maybe we might do that. That's gonna be the first port of call. Get it advertised to the trade. See if any of buyers come, come forward to buy it. It's gonna go straight on enter register trade side right now, along with this as well. I think this is probably worth 1,500 quid plus that. I'll give this a shot at that. And then I'm just gonna offer that um, on the trade bids. I don't know. I've, it's been inspected by the RAC. We can see it turns. We can see it needs a lot of TLC, but we don't know the ins and outs 
we assume it needs a new engine. I'll put all that in the advert as well. Um, and you never know, we might get quite a good deal on that car, all right? So, but one thing I can say is I'm super pleased with how it's all going. So we've got the Audi TT in stock now. We sold the uh, Tesla G Wiz thing, obviously made a massive loss on that, bit annoying, but we've got the money in the bank. Managed to put that money towards buying these two cars. Uh, we've also got the Golf GTI that's gonna begin uh, getting the, the prep done for sale as well. And I have actually, I've done another deal, which I'm not gonna be talking about in this video, but I am gonna talk all about that in the next video. So make sure you hit subscribe, come back. If this video goes on a Wednesday, that video will be live on Sunday and or vice versa. Uh, come back for the next video and see what car we've just done a deal on. It's a proper, proper interesting car. But slowly the website's looking like a proper website with cars advertising it. They're not the most, beautiful cars in the world, but this is YouTube and this is what it's all about. But you can also see the stock list on Enter Reg. It's, all, it's looking quite juicy now. We've got the TT on there. We've got the Golf uh, GTI on there. We've got the Navarre on there. We've now also got the Merc on there as well. And we've got this other car to come at the weekend, all right? So uh, yeah, guys, I'm gonna wrap it up, leave it at that. I hope you like this video. Uh, do give me your thoughts or input in the comments below. I'm very interested to see what you lot got to say to uh, the Navarra and the, the, the whole cheap car non-running situation uh, but yeah thanks for watching hit like if you like this video hit subscribe if you're new and i'll see you in the next one bye